Hey, sorry about that. I've been accused of uh, quite a few things for leaving you with that little cliffhanger. But I can assure you it was nothing more nefarious than the fact that I simply did not have any petrol. It was a long day. It was the end of a long day and I thought, why not? Let's just leave it at that. I do now, so I'll get it rigged up and we'll see if we can get it to start. Welcome to Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. <laughs> Let's try that again. Here's hoping, eh? We have life. Sorry guys, I just had to shut it off for a minute. Um, I turned the cameras off. It, it started, it ran, but it was rough. And it seemed to me like it was really flooding. Um, so I turned the cameras off and then I noticed petrol pouring out of the, uh, out of the air filter. So I removed the air cleaner, uh, the, the box, the filter box, so I could see which carburetors it was, and it was one and four, and they were just running back out, so I tapped them with a, a screwdriver on the bowls, and that stopped them uh, flooding, so obviously the needle and seats were just a bit sticky. I've refitted the air box now. We did burn, there was a bit of smoke coming out of the exhaust, hopefully we've burnt that residual oil now that was there from, obviously from assembly. I didn't have a camera on it, I've got a camera on it now, so let's try again, let's start it up again and see how it runs this time. It's a bit better. I guess the next thing for me would be to take it for a ride, but uh, it won't be today. But we've got no smoke coming out the back. Sounds, sounds okay. The motor sounds good in terms of no rattles or bangs. All right, let's have, a, let's have a bit of a chat about what's going on over here. And by here, I mean these carburetors. You saw the struggle. <laughs> the carburetors that came with the earlier GS1000, the VM McCoonies, had a much smaller diameter spigot on the engine side. So that's why it was such a nightmare for, for me trying to force these things which are 42 millimetre diameter spigots into a manifold that was designed for a 34 millimetre carburetor spigot. There's also um, the distance I'm not convinced is, is right, like the, the length of the carburetor and the, and the manifold assemblies. Plus those carburetors are pretty well just, kept the, the atomized fuels coming out of the carburetors and just smashing into hard edges. There is an answer but I need to do a little bit more research into it uh, in terms of the dimensions. I spoke to Jim at Handmade Races. He said, oh, there's a manifold out there that you can use to adapt uh, the 40 millimeter uh, carburetor spigot down to the 35 millimeter, or well, that's what he said, but it's 42 to 34. He said, I can't remember where I saw them, da 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 Give Tom at McCooney Oz a ring. He knows his stuff. So I did, I rang Tom and he said, yeah, yeah, no, we sell them. Um, go on the website, on the McCoony Oz website, look up RS accessories and you'll find the manifolds in there. But they're not actually specifically made to adapt these 
constant velocity carburetors to these heads. What it is, is it's an option to be able to mount RS flat slides onto an earlier GS1000. So I need to just do some checks on, on the actual length of the manifold, but they're tapered. So they go from, they're actually a 40 millimeter, uh, built for a 40 millimeter spigot, but you've got a better chance of getting a 42 millimeter spigot into those than you have into these, these smaller ones. Uh, and they taper down to 28 millimeter, which is the port size. So that is an option if, uh, if, if, it, has to, if it has to go down that path. Um, but it sounds pretty good at the moment. So the next thing I think would be just to go for a bit of a ride. Uh, so we're not sitting here with it idling and running up temperature in the rings without getting any uh, airflow across the motor, etc. But uh, success in that we don't have plumes of smoke coming out of the exhaust. Um, we don't have um, any big rattles. We don't have any obvious oil leaks. So I'm calling that a success and um, I'm going to wrap this up for now. So sorry for the cliffhanger last time. I need to do a few cosmetic things on the bike now that uh, probably won't warrant any, any filming um, and basically put it all back together, get the tank on it, seat on it, um, so that we can go for a ride and uh, see how she feels and, and give the rings a bit of a chance to bed in. So we're very close now to giving it back to Bill. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and I will catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.